Hi, and welcome to a new, brand new edition of Psycho Babble Movie Review. This is a movie review, a film review of the uh, of the film Thirteen Hours, and hands down, to date, the most important film review I have ever done and probably will ever do. So let's get to it, starting with the movie trailer, the Red Band trailer. This is my favorite version of the of the trailers that's offered to this movie. I think there's three main trailers offered to this movie. This is the, uh, I think, Red Band trailer number two. Uh, let me show you uh, the trailer. Let's get started right there. U.S. Ambassador at risk. You gotta send us. You're not the first responders. You will wait. Let's go! We gotta move! We have no jurisdiction in this country. We're not even supposed to be here. Losing the initiative. Stand down! If you do not get here soon, we are all gonna die. None of you have to go. But we are the only help they have. We're coming in! We're on property! I'm on the roof! Don't leave me! We're under heavy fire! Chief! Are we expecting any friendlies? I am not aware of any friendlies. Let them come. God will take care of me. If you don't send our support, Americans are going to die, including the one talking to you right now. You're not giving orders anymore. You're in my world now. I haven't thought about my family once tonight. Thinking about them now. Up here in the middle of all this. Oh, Shoot that son of a bitch! Thinking about my girls, man. Okay, so you've seen the trailer to the movie. Don't know whether you've seen the movie. I don't know whether your initial, uh, you know, opinion or take when you saw the the trailer of the movie was that it was too soon or not, or whether you had an interest or not, or depending on whether you're a Republican or Democrat, whether you was afraid of the movie or eager for the movie to be released before the elections. But um, this movie is for everybody. If you're American. It's for you. I want you to keep something in mind if you wasn't following why her emails were so important and why Benghazi was so important in this story about Hillary Clinton and uh, Obama is they were telling us, they were telling the public that it was not a terrorist attack and that it was not an assassination of our American ambassador but that it was just a inflamed situation with protesters that had been there at the gates of this compound and that is in fact not true um, you'll see in the movie someone named Oz uh, he was there not just for those couple days uh, he was there for 31 prior days to this on that compound and never saw protesters there was no protesting or parades or or chanting or anything going on um, anywhere near that compound and uh, the, you know, it just, her emails then to her, her own, her own family and to Bill stated that this was not an act branched off from any kind of protester. These were not protesters. 
this was a terrorist act. This was a planned, arranged assassination. Um, uh, you know, the best thing to do is just show you this clip. One hour before the attack in Benghazi, Chris Stevens walks the diplomat to the front gate. The ambassador didn't report a demonstration. He didn't report it because it never happened. Everything points to a terrorist attack. At 10.08, on the night of the attack, you released this statement. Some have sought to justify the vicious behavior as a response to inflammatory material posted on the internet. At 10.08, with no evidence, at 10.08, before the attack is over, at 10.08, when Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty are still on the roof of the annex fighting for their lives, the official statement of the State Department blames a video. Why? So here's what troubles me. Your experts knew the truth. Your spokesperson knew the truth. Greg Hicks knew the truth. But what troubles me more is I think you knew the truth. I want to show you a few things here. You're looking at an email you sent to your family. Here's what you said. At 11 o'clock that night, approximately one hour after you told the American people it was a video, you say to your family, two officers were, were, were killed today in Benghazi by an Al-Qaeda-like group. You tell, you tell the American people one thing, you tell your family an entirely different story. Also, on the night of the attack, you had a call with the President of Libya. Here's what you said to him. Ansar al-Sharia is claiming responsibility. It's interesting, Mr. Katala, one of the guys arrested and charged, actually belonged to that group. And finally, and most significantly, the next day, within 24 hours, you had a conversation with the Egyptian Prime Minister. You told him this, we know the attack in Libya had nothing to do with the film. It was a planned attack, not a protest. Let me read that one more time. We know. Not we think, not it might be. We know the attack in Libya had nothing to do with the film. It was a planned attack, not a protest. State Department experts knew the truth. You knew the truth, but that's not what the American people got. And again, the American people want to know why. Why didn't you tell the American people exactly what you told the Egyptian prime minister? Let me show you one more slide. Again, this is from Victoria Nuland your press person. She says to Jake Sullivan and Philippe Rhinus, subject line reads this, Romney's statement on Libya. Email says, this is what Ben was talking about. I assume Ben is the now somewhat famous Ben Rhodes author of the Talking Points Memo. This email is at 1035, 27 minutes after your 1008 statement. 27 minutes after you've told everyone it's a video, while Americans are still fighting because the attack's still going on, your top people are talking politics. Seems to me that night you had three options, Secretary. You could tell the truth, like you did with your family, like you did with the Libyan president, like you did with the Egyptian prime minister. Tell them it was a terrorist attack. You could say, you know what, we're not quite sure. Don't, don't really know for sure. I don't, I don't think the evidence is there. I think it's all in the first one, but you could have done that. But you picked a third option. You picked the video narrative. You picked the one with no evidence, and you did it because Libya was supposed to be, as Mr. Roskin pointed out, this great success story for the Obama White House and the Clinton State Department. And a key campaign theme that year was GM's alive, bin Laden's dead, Al Qaeda's on the run. And now you have a terrorist attack. And it's a terrorist attack in Libya, and it's just 56 days before an election. You can live with a protest about a video. That won't hurt you. But a terrorist attack will. So you can't be square with the American people. You can tell your family it's a terrorist attack, but not the American people. You can tell the president of Libya it's a terrorist attack, but not the American people. And you can tell the Egyptian prime minister it's a terrorist attack, but you can't tell your own people. The truth. Madam Secretary, Americans can live with the fact that good people sometimes give their lives for this country. They don't like it. They mourn for those families. They pray for those families. But they can live with it. 
But what they can't take, what they can't live with, is when their government's not square with them. I mean, I don't know how anybody can know this, can see this movie and know the truth, and then can, can know this about Hillary Clinton and Barack Hussein Obama and still either show him support or vote for Hillary for president, knowing this, seeing this, and no, before you even say it, this is not just a movie. This movie, the making of this movie, was over, it, it, overseen by three of these special operation contractors uh, that you'll see in uh, a, a clip, uh, a little bit of a behind the scenes of the movie right now that I'm going to put that rebuttal to rest right now. As you see, three of the uh, special operations uh, contractors present for every day of the filming of this, of this movie. And I'll believe them over Hillary Clinton any day. Take a look at this. My name is Christian Peranto, and my call sign was Tonto. And I was with the 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, and I was in Bravo Company. My name's uh, John Tigan, a uh, former Marine. Did uh, four years with the uh, 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines. My name's Mark Geist. Uh, my call sign's Oz. I was in the Marine Corps for 12 years. I was in Benghazi for about 30 days. When the attack happened that night, Everybody, this is Jack Silva. Jack. It's our third contract together, so he knows the drill. We had the DB, former Marine. Jack, who was a SEAL. And then Roan, he was a SEAL. It was a good crew. 13 hours just tells the minute-by-minute -minute story of what happened that night. I tried to get what we all did and what we went through. We as a team decided that the story that wasn't being told out there was what actually happened that night, and so we felt compelled to make sure the story gets out there the right way. It's not about the politics, it's the story of what happened on the ground. GRS stands for uh, Global Response Services. We're mainly used in high threat areas. We are the security element for the Central Intelligence Agency, and we just provide protection in austere environments. Hey, we're coming in, we're on property. It's Chris inside, is he still inside? Get down! All of us were former military, spec ops guys or Marines. You're working with some of the top guys in their respective services. 13 hours was how long we were in the fight that night. The state guys, we just heard them on the radio say, hey, if you guys don't get over here, we're all gonna die. And we just kind of looked at each other and said, we gotta go now. None of you have to go. But we are the only help they have. Americans help Americans overseas, especially in areas where there wasn't any military support. We had to go, no matter what. Damn the consequences. Got some wind, here we go. Roll. Roll. Our director is Michael Bay. He's been very respectful to us, and he's taken this seriously, and he's got us involved. Michael has that vision of what he wants, and he's doing it in a way so it's as accurate as possible. Ready, add, go. You won't touch. My teammates did so many amazing things. And it's a story of the battle. It's a story of a lot of sacrifice that went on. It shows that there's still guys out there that are willing to sacrifice their lives for others. You know, they put others before themselves. Very good. Got it. Beautiful. All right. With all that being said, you've seen the behind the scenes. You've seen a clip of Hillary at her hearings. So let's get to the movie review. And I'm going to try to keep this short because of all the other clips that I've involved. This is uh, getting to be a long video, I know. And I want people to view the whole video. So on a scale from 1 to 10, I always, you know, I try to be uh, as, uh, you know, liberated as I can with giving out points on a scale from 1 to 10 because you can quickly give a movie an 8 when it's really a 6 and you're just excited about it but um, you, I don't know that you'll ever see me give a movie a, a, a 10 other than this movie I'll start with you know just cinematic reasons theatrical reasons Michael Bay 
whether you like him as a producer, or you're tired of his explosion, explosion-filled uh, action movies, as a director or as a producer, this is his best film ever. Ever. From the beginning to the ending, this movie has you hooked, caring about the next scene. This movie has you caring, feeling emotional, feeling aggravated, feeling angry. Everything that you should feel, and but was staying extremely true to the true story, the, the truth. Um, the cinematography I could get into because it's incredibly beautiful from scene to scene to scene. It just keeps your eyeballs glued to the screen. But I don't have time. And I could talk about the acting, the casting, the pacing, everything on all facets of this film that I would grade a film on. It hits the mark. So, for me, Benghazi gets a well-deserved 10 out of 10. Um, of course, it gets a little bit of extra play because, and favoritism because it, it's a it's a historically accurate film about an attack on us that's just a couple years ago, and with elections coming up, and one of the people running for president is the same person that let this happen when she had a chance to prevent it. Uh, this is an extreme, uh, extremely important film. But real quick, I'm giving the movie a 10 out of 10 for reasons that I don't have time to go into, but you've got to see the movie and you'll probably agree. Uh, after you've seen it or if you've seen it, feel free to comment below about this video. Um, if you're watching it on Facebook or YouTube, you can comment on the, the video. But um, comment with your thoughts on both my review and the film itself and and Hillary. Uh, make any comment you want to. Uh, it'll be left there whether you agree or disagree with me. I won't delete anything. Uh, everybody has a right to their opinion. And um, But I will say this, and I will close on this note. Knowing what you know now if you continue to support Obama if you vote for Hillary knowing what you know now in within me in my heart to me you are as bad as the people who did this because you're perpetuating it by ignoring it and still supporting Hillary Clinton and for anybody who would see this movie or this movie review and still go vote for Hillary, there's much an enemy of mine as the people who did this.